This is my week six video log for my independent study. This week I started putting together some unit tests to, uh, to be able to make sure that I don't have any uh, inaccuracies or I don't miss any edge cases with my collision detection system. Um, I started putting together some micro benchmarks so that I can get targeted performance information about the various parts of my collision system. And I was able to make a major improvement to the performance of my collision system by adding multi-threading support. Uh, the version that I have running right now is the old single-threaded version so that I can show you what the performance of that version is when I've got the recording going. Because I've got performance numbers from when I'm running normally, but it, everything runs substantially slower with the recorder or with the screen recording running. So I just want to show you the relative numbers w w under the same conditions. So let me shut this down. And you can see here's my output um, for the collision system. So the part that we care about right here is the grid collision system. Um, that takes That's taking 39 milliseconds on average. Um, and I was able to, I, I made a small change to the, the way that I'm doing the collision testing algorithm. So it's split, I've, I've split up the broad phase testing and narrow phase testing so that the broad phase testing just creates a list of potential collision pairs and then passes that list off to the narrow phase testing, which actually runs the, the proper collision tests. Um, and that's allowed me to get timing information on those two phases separately to see which of the which is taking up more time. And you can see here that broad phase testing is taking about 17 milliseconds, with narrow phase testing taking about 21 milliseconds. Um, so of course, narrow phase testing takes a little bit longer because it's very slow, but broad phase testing is still taking up um, not quite half the time, but almost half the time. Um, and I'm going to switch over. Now I switched over to my branch where I've got the parallel collision implemented and I'm going to start running that. Um, and while that's compiling, um, I wanna just show off a little bit of, of the system that I've got going on. So the way that I've built this now is I've got my grid collision system, and the grid collision system used to have a combination of, let's see, this is weird. Um, the grid collision system, what's going on here? Something's weird going on with my cold f code folding, but whatever. Um, so the grid collision system used to have a combination of what's in, that's what's now in uh, worker and work unit. Um, worker, uh, where am I? Um, so yeah, so worker now has a grid, has, has the grid, which is a hash map, um, the cell size for the grid, which is used for doing, um, use, oh, there it goes. I'm just going to minimize that and let it run for a second so we can get some numbers. Um, it has the cell size, which is used for mapping world coordinates into grid cells. Um, and it has the candidate collisions, which, it, which is what's the, uh, the, broad phase the broad phase pass generates a list of candidate collisions. And then the narrow phase pass looks at each of, those can each of those potential collisions and determines which ones actually are colliding. Um, and... If we open up work unit, um, the work units contain a list of uh, a list of uh, bounding volumes that need to be tested, and then the final collisions uh, that that have been confirmed to exist, as well as a set of uh, a, a bounds in terms of uh, of the space that the the work unit is affecting. Um, so the way that my, my multi-threaded algorithm works currently is I create some number of worker threads, um, and currently that's four. And when I create my grid collision system, I, where is this? Here we go. Um, I create these worker threads. And each of these worker threads is given an area that they cover. 
Um, so for four worker threads, I just subdivide, I split the space in half on the, the X axis and the Y axis. So I've got four subspaces that are, that are each handled by a different worker thread. And then I spawn, let's collapse this. And then here I spawn, uh, I do, yeah, here we go. So I've got, I do thread spawn and I spawn four worker threads. Um, each of the worker threads takes in uh, one of these thread datas, which is, here we go, new work tracker. Um, the work tracker has uh, pending data and complete data. Um, and the pending data is a list of these work unit objects that is all the, the collision tests that need to be performed. And then it run, it pops one of those off the list, runs the test, and then pushes it onto the complete list where the main thread can take it off and uh, it takes all of the completed work units and merges them together into a, the, list, the final list of collisions. Um, the main threads update just looks like this where it, here we go. So it goes over the list of complete work units, which is just the done, the, it's the, all the available work units. Um, it sets up the work unit by making a copy of all of the collision volumes, which is necessary to convince Rust that what I'm doing is safe. And I think that's a potential area of performance improvement. Um, but I, I set up the work unit, I add it to the list of pending work units, and then I notify one of the worker threads to uh, grab that work unit off the list and start processing it. And I do that for all the available work units. And then the main thread goes and it waits. And it's got this, uh, this conditional variable, which is uh, a, a multi-threading thing that I don't fully understand. But from the documentation, it says it allows a thread to wait without consuming any CPU time. So it allows, it's allowing the, this main thread to wait until all of the worker threads have completed their work. And then once all of the completed work has been added back to the complete list, it then goes through each of them and it, uh, it merges them all into the, the final list of collisions, which is then used by the collision system to do uh, collision callbacks and the whatever, whatever final information it needs. Um, so why don't we go back to here? And so we'll see that I had this running for a while. And so now my hierarchical profiler doesn't have support for multi-threading yet, which is something that I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do, but I'll figure it out later. But you can at least see it here that the, the grid collision system is now only taking 20 milliseconds, whereas before um, the grid collision system was taking almost 40 milliseconds, and the narrow phase testing alone was taking 21 milliseconds. So using this, this multi-threaded algorithm has now almost doubled my performance for the grid collision system, which is a huge win. Um, I haven't been able to get any other performance improvements nearly on that order of magnitude um, through any other methods. So I'm really glad that I took the time to start doing multi-threading. And this is just the, the first, my first attempt at it alone. There's still probably a lot of, um, basic mistakes that I made since this is actually the first thing I've ever done with.